Here we are again in Maine, mid-coastal Maine, in the summer. Yay, it's been a cold summer so far. But we're going to go over the Icebox air conditioner that we showed you how to build in part one, and we're going to run some tests on it. So here's the thought process I went through when I was building the system and testing it. I had two nearly identical campers one with fans, one with this icebox air conditioner. I measured the exterior temperature, the interior wall, the interior humidity, the ambient temperature, outdoor temperature and humidity, radiator temperature, that is to say where the ice water was going through, and the roof temperature. Now, we are in mid-coastal Maine, which means that even though I was doing this in August, it didn't get very hot. So, I faked it a little bit by pretending that you were using the camper during the daytime and it was in the sun because otherwise at night just running the fans is enough. But there are those few days in Maine where it's really hot and there are a lot of days elsewhere where it's really hot. We're going to test out our new icebox air conditioning. It's the last day of August um, at 85 degree in mid coast Maine, nice and sunny. So let's get on it. Um, so we'll take, I have a temperature probe and we have two almost identical axle camp arrows, one of which has an air conditioning system that we just installed and one that doesn't. This bronze one here doesn't. So we're going to measure the temperature of the outside. And the temperature of the outside is 126 degrees. These are quite well insulated, so it's much cooler inside. The temperature here, is 83 degrees inside. Do you want to, John, uh, get a picture of the inside? Yeah. Now, this silver arrow, the temperature of the outside is a little hotter, picks up more heat. This one does. It's 129 degrees. And So what's the term? 77. 77 in there. Um, that has been out in the sun a little bit longer, but we're gonna run this air, this air conditioner for as many days as we can. We have a radiator in here, controlled to a speed, a speed dimmer, and that is essentially a radiator with fans behind it. If we come around here, You can see I filled this up with ice. There's some ice blocks in there that I put. I had some ice blocks and some frozen gallon things. And then on top of that, I threw $17 worth of ice, which is I think about 15 pounds of ice or third, no, maybe 35 pounds of ice. You can see there's a tube right here going into the cabin. Okay, so this is great. You can see the water flowing in there. And here the I can already feel the cold air so this thing is registering at 49 degrees and then we just turned it on for the first time so what are the observations well there are breaks in the three days because I was doing this during the day taking temperatures you can see on the green line when the AC has been turned on and off and I was able to keep the silver arrow the one with the air conditioning 10 degrees cooler over this limited time period of three days. I could also add a thermostat to control the temperature, namely measure the temperature in the cabin and turn the fan on or off or turn the pump on and off. So now for the next graph, the silver line is the silver arrow interior. The orange line is the bronze arrow interior. The blue is the temperature. The light blue is the silver arrows exterior temperature the yellow is the bronze exterior and some of the observations from this graph is there's a lot of heat being generated on that exterior wall the ice wouldn't have to cool that heat if you were in the shade or if you had an awning the roof temperature for the times that I measured was never above 87 degrees 
That's interesting because the roof is white. That compares to 147 degrees for the gray walls and the ceiling temperature was never above 86. So white's a very good color for reflecting the sun. Newsflash. The, this graph here has the heat coming into the interior. The dark blue is the bronze arrows interior. The dark red is the silver arrows interior. That is the one with the air conditioning. The blue is the temperature. The light blue is the silver arrow exterior. And the yellow is the bronze exterior. Observations from this graph are the temperature of the interior walls is a tug of war between the heat coming from the outside and the interior temperature, which in the silver arrow we're trying to cool down with the ice. The lesson we're learning here is that the radiator or the fan needs to be bigger, probably the radiator so that you don't use a lot of power to drive the fan. So we'll now look and see how the ice is doing. As you see, we've insulated the tubes going into the cabin and the ice not really melting very much. So I think the next experiment after today's and the next few days is going to be to put a much bigger radiator in. Radiator. Okay. Here are the different colors and the first three numbers are the different temperature measurements. The sun came out, the sun went away, the sun came out, that kind of thing. And the final number is the percentage of the temperature as compared to a white surface. You'll see that white surface in there. White, which we use as a benchmark, was between 73 and 87 degrees, depending on how much sun, and that's 100%. Black was 165% of that, with the temperature topping out at 144 degrees. So don't paint your clamper black unless you've got really good air conditioning. The blue was 130%. Blue Plasta Dip was 140%, so it absorbed a little bit more. Now the next one's a real head scratcher, and I'm going to be doing some more tests on this. But silver was only 70% of the white temperature, and it's a head scratcher because the temperature was about 75 degrees, so it's below ambient. And I tested this quite a few times. Gold is a little bit worse than white at 105%. Bronze, again, surprisingly, 87%. It may be that the reflective nature was messing with my temperature probe. And finally, powder blue, which you would think would be pretty good. It's a light looking color. That was 122% of the white. Thanks for watching part two of a DIY icebox air conditioning. Next week, we're going to cover some conclusions and advice or general things we learned. Be a great help if you would like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks.